So with you having KCG already kind of in place before walking into those meetings, having your business together, were you able to kind of leverage yourself in conversations with them? Oh yeah, for sure, because like, that wasn't my first meeting. Like, I met with every label. I've been meeting with labels since like 2015. You know what I'm saying? They just kept low by the low by the. So I just kept going until I got what I wanted. I wasn't even looking for no deal. They had reached out to me, hit me up, you know what I'm saying? See if we can work something out. And then, you know, I signed with RCA. You know what I'm saying? It made sense. You know what I'm saying? They seen my vision. They were gonna step in and control me and pull on me. They gonna let me do my thing. So I went with them as far as Rock Nation. They tried to sign me on like 
40. Mm -hmm. It ain't happened, so I think that was the management side. Right. So can you explain, uh, we have a lot of students in here. We got a program here on campus called the ERD. It's like a lot of inspiring like managers, artists, things of that nature. Can you explain the difference between like a management deal and like a, say, recording deal, production deal? Right, for sure. So a record deal, you make the sign over. It depends on what your deal is, but you basically sign up like your masters, you know what I'm saying? You sign up all your royalties. So like all that back end, you making off two and quarter, them BMI checks or ASCAP checks, the label getting that now. But they don't give you money up front. Like let's say they give you like a million dollars. In order for you to see any more money, they gotta recoup that through sales, streaming, all that, you know what I'm saying? So that's pretty much what a record deal is. A management deal is you just basically you bring them on to like help structure that. You know what I'm saying? You don't get no advance, you don't get no money, you just basically give them a percentage. A good management deal, they can probably take 10%, 10 to 15%, but if you ever sign a management deal, don't get no more than 10%, you know what I'm saying? That's how you work best. So with that, uh, man, you got a show here, October 18th at the House of Blues. Still saying soon, but where can we get tickets to the show? Uh, MaxWellCream.com, you know what I'm saying? When you call 97 out of the box, yeah. you're gonna have a like, rapper, you're gonna be giving our tickets, you know what I'm saying? It's almost sold out though, you know what I'm saying? I feel like you like- Your fan base is crazy. Like, yeah, it's, it's diverse. diverse. It's diverse, you got a pretty diverse fan base. I want to kind of get back to your team, KCG, and uh, the whole movement. How important was it for you to build a team? And I want to go into like your thought process and select the group and be a part of this team. Like, are you the type of person you want to work with? Friends, you know, people that kind of got your best interest, or are you just like looking for somebody else to be able to kind of take, to take someone to the next level? Well, really, my team, I use all three. My team been my team, you know what I'm saying, since way before, you know what I'm saying, rap. I got the same team, but I did bring in some creators, you know what I'm saying, I brought in like some management, you know what I'm saying, just some structure better, but yeah, I've been having the same team since day one. And I ask that because, uh, you know, you being the star of the team, uh, some, you know, recent news, but not recent news headlines, but some news headlines that came out about the OKC okay, thing, and it seemed like everybody wanted to throw it straight from that. So, uh, how do you kind of separate yourself from, you know, what's going on in real life versus what you got going on in professional work? Man, you just got to, I just had to step out the streets. That's, that was the only thing it was, like, my street life, was too real. Right? Everything I rap about authentic, so it was too real. You feel me? Right. So I really had to separate myself for that. You know, when I did, I just moved to LA, get up out of Houston. I'm from Houston. You know what I'm saying? It's like Houston, like the kind of city is. You can get away from it, but you step out, you go somewhere. Like you don't necessarily got to be in the streets. You go to the club. Depends on what club you go to. You on the streets, right? Because the streets in the club. You know what I'm saying? Sure. So I just had to separate myself, get away, so I can sound. You know what I'm saying? Focus. So how does the, how do you receive the narrative of? Man, you gotta get out of Houston to get successful and then come back here. Or, it really, or, I mean, you know, you know how that whole narrative is around the rap industry. Like, everybody blow outside the streets to the right, going here. I mean, I ain't gonna lie, I'm in the city, though. Yeah, it did. First, 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 you know what I'm saying? Then I would work my, my, my move outside the city. But it was really, man, like, the streets, like, I had lost two homies. I lost Kenny Lou and I lost my homie Ghost. You feel me? So they really broke my eyes up. Like, damn, what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna have one foot in the street and one foot in the music. The streets ain't never promised you. The streets don't love nobody. The streets don't promise you shit. You feel me? Everybody always wanna grow up by being a street nigga, this and that. Nah, I'm growing up by being a rapper. Cause I'm really from that. You know what I'm saying? And me being a rapper, like, I'm the most successful, successful male in my family. I'm the first male in my family to have a job. So I'm gonna grow up by that. You know what I'm saying? Like, y'all in school, grow up by that. Like, yeah. Like, I know y'all listen to a lot of my raps, but I talk about, I went to TSU. I went to school. I grew up by that too. I tried, you know what I'm saying? Work for me. The music worked, but I tried, you know what I'm saying? And you really got one better for yourself, you know what I'm saying? Right. I want to talk about your family because there's no project for any things. I just want to highlight a lot of them. I guess you would call them local people from your father. Talk to me about the influence that your dad has on your life and your family. Why? Because he was sitting on the job. Man. Every day, like he the reason why I went to school. He the reason why I finished school. Right? He got locked up when I was like, he got locked up when I was little. Then he got locked up when I was in high school too. I think it was like my junior year. So he got locked up when I got finished with him. And I went to go visit him again. He like go to school. I wasn't gonna go to school at first. So I ended up in Rowan GSU. You know what I'm saying? And I remember like, it was like the second year, like I was like with probation. 
I'm going back and forth to the all. Uh, what's in the building right there? Yeah. Fucking train building. Hell building. <laughs> They sick of me. I'm seeing counselors all in. They sick of me. Like, you know what I'm saying? I remember one day he called me. He fresh out of jail. You know what I'm saying? I went and picked him up from TSU, from the halfway house. He was like, man, stay in school. Don't rap. Don't rap. So, you know what I'm saying? So, I kind of went against his brain, but it worked good. Because let's out and try to stay here and go to school. He ain't worked on all been broke. You know what I'm saying? So, he didn't know working, but he always been in my corner from the positive side. You know what I'm saying? And even when he seen like the rap shit picking up, he got in my corner, but I'm Nigerian. Anybody know why Nigerian fans don't play that shit? <laughs> I don't care, you back so old, bitches don't get in jail. <laughs> and uh, so let's talk about kind of the southwest side of the Houston, Texas, where you want to uh, so kind of grow. We got a lot of artists coming out of here now that's mainstream, dead uh, and talking to big ones, you know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Uh, how did the streets of Aiden kind of play a role into you being you? And uh, how proud are you are for you to see like the Aiden store taking off and the Disney taking off and totally taking off? Yeah, I mean, shit. Aiden is everything I am. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's me. You feel me? That's all when I see Toby. I see Deja. It feel good because I really seen them when I was out there. You know what I'm saying? And then, you know, it's just like, it's a whole different side of town. Like, I don't know how to explain it, but if y'all from Houston and y'all know about a which is a whole different feel. Just like y'all from Houston, you know about most city. It's a whole different feel, you know what I'm saying? Like, your size, so it's kind of hard to explain. You just got to know. Right. You feel me? Right. All right, so we got a retro car, quick strike, and that's the 187 persona thing. Uh, uh, um, so, I don't know. I, I, I wrote it, but I don't know. I saw it on the chain, but I still yeah. wouldn't be able to pronounce it. You know what I'm saying? I'm addicted to the wrong uh, but what would be the main difference between retro car and retro car? Retro car was more like, you know, so I was young. It was my school, my high school. For sure. Yeah, so I'm rocking like, every day. Like, you know, I was young. I was more focused on, you know what I'm saying, being fresh. You know what I'm saying, letting sleep. That's where my brain came from. Then by the time we get to like quick strikes, I'm out of school, I'm out of college, I'm in the streets, you know what I'm saying? I'm all turned up. Back in 87, super turned up, so you can trigger back so you know what I'm saying? When I was out there, really, you know what I'm saying, going to parties, shutting shit down, shooting shit up. I'm really like real life. Tend to pumpkin and like Brandon Bakery is like, nah, I'm old. You know what I'm saying? I don't believe in that just like that's not really you hear anybody talk about some old. We just went spit on the op shop the ops. Ain't nothing happened, no police came, they ain't no retaliation back on them. That's fake. Streets don't work like that. So now I wanna like, you know what I'm saying? I don't, I ain't gonna sound preaching, but I'm giving cause and effect. You know what I'm saying? Like I got a song called Eight Figures. Tell people like put your money up, pay your tax, you can't be rich, you got eight figures. You know what I'm saying? I went from that to trigger max up. So I feel like me evolving into a man, you also hear in my music. I'm not rapping like the same shit I was rapping about in 1921 when I'm 27 with Billy. It don't make sense. So talk about the uh, importance of the relationship. You got a pretty good relationship with a lot of the agents. So I'm not going to be sure you're going to be your status. Talk to us about that relationship and the importance of keeping your life in a real good relationship. Maybe we go way back. Like party, you know what I'm saying? Like that, but like, most of my relations come out, they hear my music. Like, I don't clout chase, I don't know what <coughs> niggas up on camera, I don't go to academics, I don't do none of that lame man shit. I never <laughs> trade my respect for attention. That's why when every time somebody went into this respect, you feel me? I ain't gonna say no names, you know what I'm saying? But you got other artists that they, they live off of antics, you know what I'm saying? Like, they Instagram boom. They ain't doing no shows, they ain't doing no tour. Cause nobody goes to their page for their music. Right. They go to their page for their cap ass bullshit. Right, 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 right. So uh did you have any <coughs> part in Megan getting her deal for Rock Nation? Who? Hey. Nah, Megan worked hard, but right, she did I mean, ask me though. Right, I was gonna say I know that she she has it all, you know what I'm saying? Right. Anybody would be more than uh appreciative of having Megan on the label and on the roster, but it <laughs> seems like you at least put the eyes on the city by signing your deal, right? Like, uh, for sure, for sure. I mean, T. Ferris, he asked me, like, how do I like Rock Nation? You know, like, that's Megan Man. She, like, he was like, how do I like Rock Nation? How do they treat you? They try to reach out to her. It's a good move. I like, do that. It's like, it's a great move, especially on the business side, you know what I'm saying? Because they more of like, they just look out for the artists. You know what I'm saying? They just check your label. The loopholes and shit with them. The label can eat off. They can steal your money, but. With, a, with like the right management set up, they don't go grab their cash for it. <coughs> so, 
So, uh, my last question before we open the to the floor is that the track Brothers off of the uh, Brothers uh, Right. Did that have any comment on the music? Um, it was a really hard one. You probably feel the brother. Oh, yeah, by the way, this case is not just featured on the track. It's good and hard. Yeah, it's yeah. my favorite song. For sure, for sure. Like, so at first, like, with like my first, I'm not necessarily talking about my brother. I'm talking about like my pop. So you know what I'm saying? And then I'm in the studio, I'm vibing. I hear the song, I'm like, bro, you should hop on this. But his verse, he's talking about me. You feel me? But he just like, you know, he's, I still got morals. I still go by certain codes. Like, if you my bro, and that's your bitch, I'm not gonna try to talk to your bitch, fuck this bitch, that's my bro. You know what I'm saying? I still believe in loyalty. You know what I'm saying? Nowadays, no bitch to young niggas, but I feel like a lot of niggas are cold. There ain't no loyalty, ain't no morals. I've been trying to bring that back. You know what I'm saying? Now that you have grown into a more mature man, how do you intend on reaching back to the sacred sound of young men here and throughout the community and showing them that a life of crime and living in the streets is not going to get you there? Right. Well, right now, like what I did with like my last album, I'm doing like prison, um, prison reform. Prison reform. And I'm doing it right now with um, one of my bro, J-Lo, which is my bro, you know what I'm saying, older brother. Him and my cousin, they got 35, you know what I'm saying, years, you know what I'm saying? Like, like I mentioned them through my songs, like through that, like I'm supposed to go down to TDC, interview them, you know what I'm saying? And plus try to get them rehabilitation, you know what I'm saying? Cause they so quick to lock up young black men at the age of 16, 17, you know what I'm saying? And then give them like 20 years, and then when like, and once they get back to the free world, they mind state is still at a 16, 17 year old. So like trying to help them, you know what I'm saying? They just throw them in there, put them back out, put them on papers and wait for them to fuck up. But like they don't, but they don't try to make them like fathers for their kids or like, Responsible, so like that's what I'm trying to do. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to push for that. You also did the reading with a rapper thing. Oh too, yeah, right. I did. Yeah, that was great. Um, right. my name is Janai Bridges. I'm the lifestyle and entertainment editor for the Teenage Mutant Maryland. I was just wondering, what advice would you give to creators who are trying to enter the world without Keep going. Keep going. Anything worth it? Take a while. Like when you go to McDonald's, right? Take you five minutes to get that food right. You done. But when you go to root Chris, you gotta sit down. Take time to get your steak. They gonna bring you some bread. So if it's worth it, and like it's gonna take a little longer. But you know what I'm saying? Just keep going. Anything that's worth it is worth waiting on. That's crazy, I remember this show too. I mean, I need, you know what I'm saying, to go through it so I can see like how this performing in front of nine people, then performing in front of 50,000. You see the growth, you know what I'm saying? And like, really, that kept me humble and it kept me going. You know what I'm saying? And it like kind of kept the fire under my ass. I need to go harder, I need to go harder, I need to go harder. All motivation, but I feel like it was very important. I feel like we need more of that now. You know what I'm saying? There's a lot of artists, pretty sure there's a lot of great artists here. You know what I'm saying? All over. I feel like we should have more shows and do more like that. Cause somebody died. Somebody had to say somebody where it was, you feel me? So yeah, I feel like that S is a Southpaw and just music in general in Texas. We need to bring that back. Cause that was like inspiration. Like for me, like I ain't have nothing out but to be on that same line up with Kendrick and Schoolboy, you feel me? The motivation. Um, how you doing? Uh, Radio, uh, um, I know what you said earlier, and being from Houston, we all know, like, anybody from Houston, anybody takes it, like, we got this kind of swag to us, like, it's, it's important to us, Houston is important to us. Like, do you ever feel pressure, like, that you got to be the one to put the city on? Like, like you might have friends and stuff like that, people come to you, like, dang, you know, 
it's, it's your job to carry him or, or not really carry him but to put him in place and set him safe. I don't feel pressure. Is anybody that's around me, that's been around me, know how it works. How it works. I ain't get this overnight. Like he said, I've been 2011. That's damn near what? Nine years ago, ten years ago, you feel me? And like people still look at me as like a new artist. Like I go do interviews and like my first tape was Brandon Banks, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, you gotta put in work. You know what I'm saying? That's the main thing. Like like I hear like a lot of people dropping out of college to rap. But I'll be like, you dropping out of college to rap, you think you gonna drop out and it's gonna be easy, the same amount of work you put in, studying and stuff you gotta put in with this music. Right. Like how kids pop Adderall, so I ain't encouraging it. <laughs> like how kids pop Adderall, like to do they work, I do that for my music to go do a 12 hour session so I can actually sit down and work. Right. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't care what your job is, nine to five or whatever, you gotta put in eight hours a day, whether it's rap or whatever, you know what I'm saying? Or study, going to school, you gotta put in that work. So basically, shit, you don't work, you don't need. Raven Williams with uh, TSU TV. Um, you said you were a Nigerian, so also being from Houston and being Nigerian, how does it affect your music? I got texts oh. and I say K40 chops. I ain't got a box. Pop a couple shots. Call my plug a lot. I'm a cop from a city. I feel like I don't really have, like, affect my music, but I am starting to, like, dig it's like the Nigerian music more. My father's Nigerian, too. My, my mom, she's American. I was really close to my Nigerian family, but I got a lot of Nigerian friends that's been putting me on. And recently, I just beat them with Burner Boy. You know, so, 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 so,